our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Autumn fades rapidly into winter here in northern Sweden, where the forests stretch to the horizon. All is quiet, or at least that's how it seems. In a hangar deep in the woods, there's frenzied activity as students from across Europe get ready to launch their precious experiments on high-altitude balloons. One of the three teams on the first flight includes students from Poland and Romania with a glider called Icarus. It's basically a gliding machine, a lifting body. It doesn't have any wings. It's a wingless flying machine. This fins here, the V-tail fins and the vertical stabilizer is just for longitudinal stability and a little bit of pitch stability. Uh, this specific program is to get students into the space business, into the natural science, to go in as scientists, as technicians, as uh, engineers, to boost the space business in both, well, in Europe in total. Everyone is watching the sky. To launch, they need calm, dry weather. But the bad thing is that we will have Still a lot of precipitation. The students are learning from the professionals that sending a helium balloon up to 29,000 meters requires meticulous planning. The climate is of special interest for the all-female team from Germany. Their sensors will measure tiny changes in air turbulence as the balloon goes up. And there we will put our small hot wires. So I have here just one of these hot wires with me. Uh, because it's really, really small and sensitive, you can measure really, really small wind fluctuations because you have, with that, a spatial re resolution of centimeters. It's really sensitive. When you put it like this on the table, it's broken. Really. <laughs> This annual project, known as BEXUS, includes teams backed by the Swedish and German space agencies or the European space agency, ESA. BEXUS is an excellent opportunity for university students. It really offers them, within a short space of time, a complete activity. So they can have an idea, they design the experiment, they build it, test it, then they get to see it fly, they get it back, they can analyze the results and write a report. It's, it's the full package and it's just what a scientist or engineer might do in their real career. Some experiments may be scientific, others engineering based. All of them are taken very seriously. The Italian team's inexpensive inertial navigation system has an obvious real-world application. We are doing this using um, accelerometers and gyroscopes that sense the movements of the, of the Bexos balloon. Actually, we are not reinventing the wheel. Uh, inertial navigation, navigators uh, exist and they cost a lot of money. Our navigator uh, is made with the low-cost components. We have projects which specifically target those areas that we find it difficult to recruit in. So uh, we have a relationship with the personnel division who tell us, yes, this year we've, we've had difficulty in recruiting, for example, navigation engineers. And then we could focus specifically a project on navigation with university students that might prepare them better to apply for those jobs in the next years. Five a.m. on launch day. The sky is clear. The weather is perfect, and Ola Person and his crew are already winding out the yellow zeppelin used to gauge the wind. The students have had their rehearsals. The countdown clock is running, and the stress is starting to show. A little bit nervous <laughs> because now it's the day and everything must go in the right way. 
we have no more opportunities. It's okay, so we can't change anything more. So we just sit and wait and hope that everything will be fine. It should be okay. If it's not okay, we'll make it okay. <laughs> As day breaks here inside the Arctic Circle, there's intense activity on the launch pad. minutes to go and the students can put the final touches to their experiments. Student programs as this one could of course be totally whatever. So it doesn't have to be strict science. Uh, I don't think we will find any Nobel Prize winners among these gondolas but maybe in the future these guys or girls may come back as a Nobel Prize winner. Just as everything is set there's last minute drama. The Italians have to fix an intermittent link between their computer and the navigator. And there's disaster for the Icarus team. Their high altitude glider won't be allowed to fly. There seem to be some interferences between our system and their Riba systems. We are time restrained. I mean, they, they start to launch the balloon, so there is no way to actually make it until the launch. Finally, the balloon is launched. As the experiments are lifted into the chill air, at least one team knows its instruments are working just fine. From our data, from our point of view, we can uh, say that the balloon is going up straight and it has just a little bit of spin around its vertical axis. You must be very happy. Yes. <laughs> Still nervous until the landing, but happy. <laughs> the flight was declared a success, with the payload later delivering good data for the all-female team from Germany. <laughs>